We are back. We are back to Michael's 8th Avenue in Glen Burnie, Maryland for another exciting edition of Ballroom Boxing. Still our crowd on hand tonight for some of the best boxing action coast to coast. Hi, everybody. I'm Larry Michael. Great to be back with John Saracino. John, always a buzz in the ballroom tonight, a special feeling of electricity. It's always a lot of excitement here, but tonight there's really excitement because we have a championship tested fighter and some other interesting personalities we'll see later. No question, a lot of personalities here. On the main event though, Thomas Tate coming off a world championship loss, a controversial loss, and he makes a visit to the ballroom taking on B. Scotland, who if nothing else, an exciting tough fighter. Good fight for B. Scotland. It's really a move up for Scotland. He's never faced anybody with Thomas Tate's experience. Three times Tate's had world title fights against Julian Jackson, Roy Jones, and the fight you mentioned last fall, Larry, against Sven Otker. Sven Otker was cutting that fight badly against Thomas Tate. They went to the scorecards. Otker was ahead. Tate lost. And as John mentioned, plenty of personalities here in the building tonight. Ballroom boxing in the ring when we return. Ballroom Boxing brought to you tonight by Toyota, by Budweiser, by Geico Direct, and by 104.3 WOCT. We're back in the ballroom. Larry Michael with John Saracino. Great to have you with us for more Ballroom Boxing action. Pat O'Malley in the ring as well. Let's go to Pat. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. The Maryland State Athletic Commission Promoter Scott Wagner, Josh Hall, and Commissioner Carl N. Milligan, Jr., and Executive Director Patrick Pinello. And Ballroom Boxing present this six-round bout in the Super Welterweight Division. The referee in charge is Gary Campaneshi. Judging the bout, Kenny Chevalier, John Gradowski, and Malik Wali. Introducing the boxers. Out of the red corner, wearing the black with red, weighing 150 and one quarter pounds, from Capitol Heights, Maryland, with a record of three and five. Please welcome Lawrence the Crusher Brooks. To my right, out of the blue corner, wearing black and blue trunks, weighing 150 and three quarter pounds. He is from Newtonville, New Jersey, with a record of three and oh, all by knockout. Please welcome Johnny Shotgun Hayes. We've seen Johnny Hayes before here in the ballroom, and we've seen the referee, Gary Campaneschi, here in the ballroom before as well. Let's get Gary's comments to the fighters. She's in the dressing room. I expect a clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Watch your low blows. Most of all, obey my commands. Touch them up, wait for the bell. Touch them up, let's go. Boy, Johnny Hayes in a trance-like state, resembling my partner, John Saracino, who's going to take a look at the matchups. All right. The crusher, Lawrence Brooks against Shotgun Hayes. Sounds like a WCW match. Really, the tail of tape, as you can see, is fairly even. It's really a Styles matchup, Larry. The terrific puncher, Hayes, against Brooks, the stylish boxer. Now, we've seen the explosive power of Johnny Hayes back in November of last year. He blew out Ricardo Edmonds in the first round. Edmonds, a protege of middleweight champion Keith Holmes. It was a disappointing evening for the champion Keith Holmes as he watched his protege go down at the power of Johnny Hayes. Now, Lawrence Brooks is a veteran from the Keystone Gym. Keystone Boxing Club has a lot of good training under his belt. And unfortunately, his uh, protector is riding a little high and his shorts are riding a little low. I thought maybe we're going to get a fashion report here. Now Johnny Hayes is absolutely ripped. Take a look at the guy's body. I mean, there, that is about as slim and ripped as you can get. I've seen you in front of the mirror, and it's not, it's not a whole lot different. No, you're right, John. Funny you should mention that. And Lawrence Brooks, the corner of Lawrence Brooks, told us before tonight's fight, watch this, it's going to be the fight of the night. Our guy's going to pull the upset and hand this kid his first loss. Well, Brooks has got to get out of the first couple of three rounds. That's the dangerous part with Hayes. He's a terrific puncher. Seeing Charles Clark knock out Lawrence Brooks here in the ballroom. Brooks coming off of a decision loss to Juan Diaz. March 1st of this year. Oh, 
Brooks trying to smother Hayes, take away some of that punching range. These first three minutes, very dangerous for Brooks. Hayes talking to Brooks a little bit. He's in the taking ring. a chance, I tell you, coming in there like that, Larry. He doesn't have the kind of power, I don't think, to hang with Johnny Hayes. He's really testing him, I think, foolishly. Johnny Hayes is 3-0, and all three wins by knockout. Now, I don't quite understand the strategy here. Throwing all caution to the wind here in the first round is Hayes, excuse me, Brooks walking right in on Hayes, not even his punching his way in effectively. And Hayes now walking towards Brooks a little bit, as if to say, boy, if that's all you've got, this could be a short night. Hayes almost looks like he wants to counter punch her. He's trying to get Brooks to come forward. Now Brooks is saying, hey, I didn't like that last time. Good left hook by Hayes. Nice right counter, though, by Brooks. Maybe not as much power behind his, but momentarily stopped the onslaught by Hayes. That was a good punch, though. Now we got a real chess match going on here with Hayes looking to counter punch. And you see how careful Brooks is being on the outside. He's not going to hit him from out there. That jab's about two and a half feet short. See, and there's a counter right hand by Hayes, but he missed. He's chasing him all over the ring. Trying to run him down, not walk him down. <laughs> now, Johnny Hayes has never been more than the second round. In fact, he's never completed two rounds in his pro career because of his knockout power. So the strategy by Brooks would have to be take him out to the deep water. Even though the water's not too deep here tonight, it's just a six round bout, but that's not how he fought him the first minute and a half. Chess match will continue in round two from the ballroom. Welcome back to ballroom boxing tonight brought to you by Toyota. Larry Michael with John Saracino in the run right now. Johnny Hayes unbeaten 3-0 and in the black trunks with the blue trim. Went up against Lawrence Brooks from Capitol Heights, Maryland. Brooks three and five with no knockouts to his credit in his career. You mentioned earlier, Larry, that Hayes had never been beyond really much more than a round and a half. Lawrence Brooks, on the other hand, his last four fights have gone to distance. The problem is he lost three of them. Two six-rounders and a four-rounder. So he has shown he can fight a few rounds. But tonight he's got a much more difficult assignment with a big puncher like Hayes. Johnny Hayes from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Well, he wanted to make him pay, did Hayes, but I tell you what, Brooks threw that left hook so wildly and was so out of position, Hayes couldn't even hit him with a counter punch. Interesting that Hayes is impressing it a little bit more here offensively, preferring to wait and wait and wait. He's waiting to throw that right hand, and he's trying to parry, then fire. He's not jabbing either, though, John. Just trying to set up the one shot. He's, I think loading, it, he's loading up, exactly. Carries a lot of power in those fists, though. There we see Brooks covering up nicely. Tell you what, when he loads up, look out. Especially that right hand. It's like a hailstorm. <laughs> you ever feel that? You go out in a hailstorm and it's pelting you in the face? I mean, right now, that's what Brooks is experiencing. And that's why you see him on the outside trying to jab his way in and go to the body. Sometimes he's been a little bit effective, but it's a real difficult fight because eventually he's gonna taste that power of Hayes on the inside. But you're right, Johnny Hayes really not throwing any punches at all. There he tried to throw a lead right hand. He should at least be jabbing and not allowing Brooks to walk right in unless, of course, that's what he wants him to do. It's almost like he's keeping Brooks in the fight. Brooks though, uh, very well schooled fighter. As we mentioned, out of the oh, Keystone go, Boxing punching, Club in no holds. Maryland. Stop holding, you stop holding. Stop. You, know, you know, and Hayes is playing Brooks so cheap right now as if to say, I'm just going to stand here and I'm going to punch when I want to and I'll catch you coming in with these sucker shots. Not really a real poised effort by Hayes. But Brooks, by the way, just to argue the point, John, Brooks is not not causing Hayes to fight any other way. If Brooks will put some heat on, maybe fire some well, punches on his own, he might take Hayes out of that lazy style, and maybe he wants to just leave him where he is. Well, he is. I mean, he's trying to jab his way in. The problem is, is when he gets close enough to get hit, and you see him, that's why he's got that right foot in the bucket a little bit, backing out. See, but I think Hayes should be pressing the action a little bit more. Right hand off the shoulder of Brooks. And that's why 
you know, you got to fight with two guys standing there looking at each other. I mean, Hayes has got to do a little bit more fighting, too. He certainly has the power and skill. Big left hand to close the round. We'll be back with more from the ballroom. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Tonight brought to you by Budweiser Beer. Larry Michael and John Saraceno along with John Scheinman. Two rounds in the books. John, how do you have it scored? I'll tell you, Larry, you said that Johnny Hayes looked like he was in a trance during the referee's instruction, and I think he's fighting that way. I got Lawrence Brooks winning both rounds up 2018. I loved his strategy in the first round where he smothered and swarmed and just outworked Hayes. In the second round, he backed off of that, but he didn't really pay for it. Johnny Hayes has done nothing to earn any points in this fight except nine in each round. All right, that's John Scheinman, who is uh, with us each fight. A slip by Johnny Hayes as he misses a punch. John Saraceno begs to differ with... That was the John end, and here comes the Yang. I did had Hayes winning that first round because I think he tore up Brooks on the inside, particularly along the ropes. But the second round he gave to Brooks, I got it even. Got to give it to Brooks right in the face of unbeaten Johnny Hayes. See the look on Brooks's face. He knows he's in a war right now. I don't know if Hayes has... He's got to be taking it seriously, but he doesn't have any any sense of urgency. And don't forget, Johnny Hayes has never gone past the second round. We're in round three right here now. See, when you see a fighter like Hayes holding his hand, left hand low, and cocking his right, he's telling the other guy, come on, throw it. I'm going to hit you with this right hand when you miss me. But really, Hayes is doing far too much posing in this fight, Larry. He's a better fighter than he's showing. You would think skill-wise, certainly he's got the power. I tell you what, Brooks is not backing down. He knows if he presses Hayes, he's at least in this fight. Brooks is moving forward now. I think his strategy certainly was to get Hayes past the first couple of rounds. Now he's beginning to build in confidence. But you also got to remember, see that punch was blocked by Hayes. It's effective punching that counts in the fight. Effective aggressiveness. Who lands the solid punches? That punches. Right there, the right hand landed on Hayes' shoulder. That is not a scoring blow. But right now, Hayes is backing up. He's fighting backing up for the first time in the fight. And you and see looks, Brooks is pushing the action. And it looks bad to the, to the judges, more importantly. They're not putting a positive, planting a positive seed in their mind, and he's hurt. Brooks shot is by hurt. Hayes. Let's see if he can finish him off. Brooks looking to hold on. Another right hand clips him. And the left, Gary Campanesci, the referee, taking a good look. Johnny Hayes moving forward, but Brooks too wild, Larry. Hayes was too wild there. Crowd loves the heart of Brooks as he battles back from that onslaught. Hayes got very wild, just started winging shots instead of maybe stepping back, throwing a couple to the body, and then coming up with an uppercut. He's still wobbly. Look at Brooks, and Hayes is letting him off the hook. Jab scores. Brooks in some trouble. Another jab. Now Brooks moves away. He's trying to get some life back in his legs. Big right hand by Johnny Hayes. Fight should be stopped. Or very close to it. He's out on his feet, Larry. Brooks wobbly. This round coming to a close. Another right hand by Brooks. Oh, he fought back at the end of that round. And Brooks being restrained by his corner. What a gutty performance by Lawrence Brooks. What a round. Johnny Hayes in his corner, catching a breather. We'll catch one, too. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Larry Michael and John Saraceno checking out the onslaught of Johnny Hayes. What kept Brooks up during that barrage? I don't know. I guess two sturdy legs and a lot of, mostly guts. Mostly guts because he was out on his feet and he actually fought back. Not only did he survive, he fought back, but I had Hayes winning around 10 to 8. Let's see if Brooks has recovered. Hayes looking ready to go. Here we go. Doctor checked out Lawrence Brooks between rounds, said he was okay to continue. Brooks was wobbly for the last 30 seconds of that last round. And the question remains, Johnny Hayes, what does he have in the gas tank? Well, I don't know if he punched himself out there. But uh, you spent a lot of energy, John. I think maybe didn't punch himself out, but certainly for a guy that's never gone past two rounds, we're into round four. He really expended a lot of energy in round three. No question. And again, as we spoke before many times in ballroom boxing, you can train to fight ten rounds, but it's not like fighting the ten rounds in the ring. This fight, in fact, is scheduled for six. Well, Brooks, his senses are totally cleared. Steady legs. 
And you see he's pressing the action. Big overhand right by Brooks. Problem with that kind of punch, it's very telegraphed. It loses a lot of power. Oh, what a right hand by Johnny Hayes. And Brooks keeps walking him down, Larry. Brooks' legs are a little wobbly. He's got to protect himself from the right hand of Hayes. That's the punch. Johnny Hayes really on top of it right now. And he, Hayes has a lot of natural power. If he would shorten his punches, though, I think he'd even be a better puncher than he is because he's telegraphing a lot of his shots, too. Very long and wide, and some of that comes with fatigue. Hayes needs a little bit more discipline, Larry, as a pro. He's got skills. Let's see, he's getting hit with a punch here that he shouldn't get hit with. Left hand is low. Right-left combination by Johnny Hayes. Both punches scoring to the head of Lawrence Brooks. Boy, Brooks has got some chin, doesn't he? Granite. Hey, right. Stop, stop. Keep your head up. Up. Box. See, Johnny Hayes has his mouth open. He's sucking for air right now. The same could be said for Lawrence Brooks. Brooks continuing to press the action. But when it's got hot and heavy inside, let's face it, Hayes has had the better of it. Johnny Hayes staying away, John. Do you think uh, maybe looking to regain some energy here? That's a very good point. He did expend a lot of energy, as you mentioned, in that third round. It's really huffing and puffing, too. And let's face it, he's kind of fought this style the whole fight. He's backpedaled and he's counterpunched. He's really picked his spots. But he's wasted a lot of time. Now this 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 round right here almost impossible to score. You Neither know, fighter landing any scoring blows. Johnny Hayes could be a real crowd thriller if he would focus more on moving forward and using the skills he has, Larry. These guys talking to each other a little bit. Big right hand misses by Lawrence Brooks. We'll be back. Uh, the chandeliers are polished tonight here in the ballroom. Larry Michael and John Saracino. John Scheinman, the third member of our broadcast crew through four rounds. Scheduled for six. How do you have it scored, John? All even, 38-38. I gave a 10-10 round even that last round. Nothing happened at all. I don't know what Johnny Hayes is doing. He's got the punching power advantage. He's the crisper puncher. He's the faster-handed boxer. And he is just standing there and waltzing around like this is the ballroom. I think the guy's got to get to work. This one's dead even going into the fifth. John Saraceno, how do you have it scored? Well, I did score that round 10-10 also, but I have Hayes ahead 39-37 by virtue of a 10-8 round when he had Brooks out on his feet in the third. Round five, we are really looking to see what kind of energy Johnny Hayes carries into the late rounds. Never been past two. Three wins all by knockout, good left hand. And the onslaught uh, he's continues. Hurt. He's hurt again, Larry. Brooks is hurt. We've seen this earlier in this fight, this type of onslaught by Johnny Hayes. Let's see if Hayes can finish it this time, and Brooks wisely holds. Smart move by Brooks, and Hayes might have caught a uh, head to the mouth as he gets warned by Gary Campanesci. That is Brooks getting warned. Johnny Hayes has slowed down a lot, and if Brooks had any kind of offense left, he could make him pay, but I'm not so sure he's got the offense to make him pay. Well, this is a fight where you've got an interesting styles contrast, as we said, going into this fight. That's the puncher Hayes versus the boxer Brooks. And I think Hayes' power has made the difference here tonight in this fight. He's done enough, he's hurt. Brooks enough to be winning the fight, I think. But again, I think we've painted a different picture of his career, what he needs to do a little bit more of if he's going to get better. Come on, let's have some and I wonder here, let's go. if he's not quite the defensive fighter. Oh, good left hook by Hayes on the inside. Well, that answers the question, how much power does Hayes carry into the late rounds? The Single punches again, though, John, not combinations. Come on, throw some punches. Let's go. <laughs> Gary Campanishi must be listening to us up there. Hayes just doesn't have quite the polish and confidence of a guy who can fight on the inside and slip and counter and parry. It's a young guy, 26 years old. Lawrence Brooks, 24 years old. 
He's got to remember to move his head too. Sometimes when Hayes is standing in front, he's, he's an easy target. The problem is most of the time he's throwing when he's right in front of Brooks on the inside, and Brooks is unable to get off Larry. He's not really a counter puncher. Fifth round is winding down. The sixth and final round to come here in the ballroom. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing, Larry Michael and John Saracino. And you know that man, don't you, John Saracino? That's Lou Duba. What's he doing here? Manager and trainer. He's trained Vander Holyfield, Pernell Whitaker, Meldrick Taylor, Tyrell Biggs. Lou Duva enjoying the action here tonight in the ballroom. Big fan of ballroom boxing, Lou Duva. And of course, anytime Lou's in town, we get a chance to spend some time with him. And a little bit later in the broadcast, we're going to hear from Lou Duva. Sixth and final round. Quickly, John Scheinman, how do you have it scored after five? Now I've got Hayes ahead. He's up 48-47, landed some good power shots in that round. Um, he's just inexperienced. I think that's the difference here, and that's why Brooks has been able to stay in the fight. What do you think, John Saracino? 49-46, Hayes. They're going to have Brooks winning here by a knockout, really, to pull this one out. Certainly a learning experience for Johnny Hayes. If he were to win this fight, he would be 4-0. And it would be his first decision fight. And who knows how the judges have it scored. I mean, uh, John Scheinman has it scored much closer than I do. And who's to say he's not right? You know, boxers are funny about their records, John. If they're unbeaten, they think uh, the first loss is the worst one they'll ever experience. If they've never had a decision win, they say, oh, my knockout win uh, streak has been broken. It'll be interesting to see what Johnny Hayes has to say if he were, in fact, to win by decision. That's, that's a push. That's a, yeah, he, he hit him with his hip, actually, and knocked him off balance. Johnny Hayes, a little too much hot dogging, a lot of potential, but he's not really using it like a school professional. Young fighter, he's got to go back in the gym, cut out a little bit of the clowning. See, he got hit there with a silly punch because he's dropping his right hand. He got hit with a sweeping left hook, Larry. Yep, no power behind it, right. but it certainly landed. And I think that's why he's been fighting the weight. Oh. Big right hand by Johnny Hayes, a ripping right hand. Right on the kisser. Lawrence Brooks just keeps on coming, though. I just don't think Hayes can feel he can really be hurt by Brooks. And he's getting Stop careless. Oh, the heads right, clash right, right. that you time. Keep your punches up. Box. Second time in his fight, the uh, yep. head of Brooks hit the mouth of Hayes. Campanishi warning the fighters keep their punches up. Once again, you said Hayes had never been beyond basically a round and a half, four or five minutes. So this is certainly a workout for him, if nothing else. Good work for a young fighter. He doesn't really look fatigued. On the other hand, he hasn't punched a lot for much of the fight. So oh, I'm not fight. surprised as it begins to rain here at ringside. Oh, it up, it's son. a little bit wet. There's perspiration and sweat flying off the fighters. John, uh, John, what do you think of Johnny Hayes in terms of future ability? The guy looks to have a lot of skills. Good right hand by Johnny Hayes. Well, I mean, clearly Johnny Hayes can punch like a mule. But he's going to have to get a little bit more serious as a fighter if he wants to sell tickets because people do not want to see you run around the ring like he's doing. Now, in this, of course, in this round, he's got the fight won, and so he's really on his bicycle. But I think he needs to go forward. He needs to find that first, second gear more than he does the R gear, which is reverse. Right now, Johnny Hayes content just to win this by decision. He's got to get a little more confident on the inside, Larry. Good fight, good heart shown by Lawrence Brooks, a lot of skill shown by Johnny Hayes, and good sportsmanship shown by both fighters. So this fight goes the distance. We'll return to see who the victor was here on Ballroom Boxing. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Action from this exciting fight. Johnny Hayes tagging Lawrence Brooks. You saw the right hand. And this, uh, this was repeated several times through the fight as Hayes really put on an onslaught. And Lawrence Brooks could do nothing but cover up and try to defend himself. Johnny Hayes, a lot of power in his fist. Let's see if Johnny Hayes still has the unbeaten record. We're going to find out from Pat O'Malley. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. We have a unanimous decision. Judge Chevalier scores at 59-55. Judge Gradowski scores at 59-55. And Judge Waleed scores at 58-56. And the winner, by unanimous decision, Johnny 
Shotgun Hayes. So no surprise there, Johnny Hayes, a victorious, a unanimous decision. First time he's ever gone the distance, and he's going to go to the distance now with our own John Scheinman. Johnny, your knockout streak came to an end here, yeah. but you still got the win. We felt that you could have been a little bit more active. What do you think? Yeah, I could have had, but I hurt my knuckles when I was hitting them. In the first round, I hurt them, hurt both my knuckles, so I couldn't do as much as I wanted to do. But I thank God for what I did, you know? Hey, I won. Thank God for that. You seemed like you were still throwing both hands throughout the fight, though. When you did get off, you hurt him almost every time. Yeah, well, you know, I got to keep busy or I'm going to lose. You know, I can't lose. I can't afford it. 4-0. Oh, it doesn't matter if it's a knockout or not. Johnny Hayes gets another win. Let's go back to ringside to Larry and John. Uh, John Scheinman with the scoop. Johnny Hayes with a hurt knuckle, but it didn't seem to impact him too much. No, that was really a power-punching exhibition. Really ended up being an easy fight for Johnny Hayes. All right, we'll be back with more ballroom boxing. Don't you dare go away. Ballroom Boxing brought to you tonight by Toyota, by Budweiser, by Geico Direct, and by 104.3 WOCT. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Check us out on the World Wide Web, www.ballroomboxing.com. Log on and find out the latest news, dates of upcoming Ballroom Boxing cards, and our lovely ring card girls. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen, the Maryland State Athletic Commission, Chairman Carl A. Milligan, Jr., Executive Director Patrick Vanella, and ballroom boxing promoter Scott Wagner and matchmaker Josh Hall present this six-round bout in the junior welterweight division. Your referee in charge is Wa Malik Walid. Judging the bout, John Gradowski, Bill Holmes, and Kenny Chevalier. Introducing the boxers to my right, out of the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks trimmed in red, weighing 143 and a half pounds from Washington DC by way of Nicaragua with a record of three six and one two by KO please welcome Luis Alberto Little Dinamita which means Little Dynamite Rosales <laughs> fighting out of the red corner wearing the black trunks trimmed in gray weighing 144 pounds. He is from Baltimore, Maryland, with a record of 16 and seven, five by knockout. Please welcome Ed Griffin. Ed Griffin lo has lost five of his last six, but he started his career with an 11 fight What's winning that? streak. Malik Walid is the very competent okay, referee Maryland, for this battle. I expect good clean boxing. When I say break, you just stop punching. Take a full step back. Remember, protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck to you both. When you take a look at the matchup, John Saracena, the thing that just jumps out at you is the height differential. Well, Rosales only five foot five. Ed Griffith listed at five nine. Of course, a little bit of a reach advantage for Griffin. 29 years old, Rosales, 25. Ed Griffin's been in against some very tough comp competition. He is uh, a loss to Vernon Forrest. Vernon Forrest is one of the up-and-coming okay, welterweights okay. in the right. entire world, one of the top-rated welterweights in the world. Saw him fight in the Olympics, and he's come a long way as a pro, and a nice kid to boot. <laughs> Ed Griffin in the black trunks. Luis Alberto Rosales. From Washington, D.C., by way of Managua, Nicaragua. John, this is uh, always a tough matchup when you face a shorter opponent, kind of a fire plug kind of guy. It's hard to find an opening. And when you punch down, you lose a little power. Well, right now, the Nicaraguan punching up, Rosales. Of course, the fighter you think of most often when you hear Nicaragua, Alexis Arguello. Rosales has been active. Fought eight times in 99, has fought once so far in this year. Ed Griffin, a little different, fought twice in 1999. His last fight was July 29th, a victory over Homer Gibbons in Georgia, an eight round decision. Watch your heads. Work out of there with the free hand. Pushing. Oh, Rosales has got to find a way to get inside Griffin's jab. Good head movement there by Rosales. Out of the way of two jabs and a right hand. 
This is with a left hook. A real feeling out process here in the first round. This fight is scheduled for six here in the ballroom. Body shots seem to bother Griffin a little bit there. He walked away with a grimace on his face. And Southpaw, Rosales switches up, goes unorthodox. Griffin trains out of Mac Lewis's gym in Baltimore. Very prestigious situation for him. Rosales trains with Charles Mooney. So plenty of good training going on for both of these fighters. And two familiar faces there in the training business okay. in the Washington, D.C. metro area. And the biggest difference you see here, Larry, is the hand speed by Griffin. He's two, two, two or three beats faster than Rosales. So he's got a, an advantage right off the bat in addition to the physical advantages in height and reach advantage. Good left hook by Griffin. I like to see Griffin jab a little bit more and keep Rosales on the outside. He's allowing Rosales just to walk in and get free shots at him. Griffin's a little bit better fighter than that. Maybe he feels that the little guy can't hurt him. Griffin had an opportunity back in 97 for the IBF Intercontinental title, traveled over to England and lost a, a two-round TKO at the hands of Ryan Rhodes. And his career has been shaky ever since. Round one winding down here in the ballroom. We'll be back. Welcome back, Ballroom Boxing. Larry Michael and John Saracino, great to have you with us again in the ballroom. Round two underway, Larry Michael and John Saracino. Ballroom Boxing brought to you by Budweiser Beer. John, round one in the books. You saw the experience of Ed Griffin making a difference in round one. Experience, its size advantage, uh, had a better jab, and really, Rosales had a hard time getting inside and was really outquicked by Griffin, who I gave the round 10-9. I'll tell you what, Rosales coming on here in the second round, he's really taking it to him. Well, Griffin's got to keep the jab going, and he's really not doing that. For Rosales, he's got to remember to keep that right hand up after he punches, because he's been getting hit with left hooks. See? Tough to fight a smaller guy that much shorter than you, John. You, your punching range is taken out. No, 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 Where you normally punch, throw punches, you have to adjust down. Well, you got to punch down. You can lose power punching down. But see, Griffin's moving so much that it's it's hard to get set to punch when you're when you're retreating as much as he is. Now, if he does that and just steps to the side. Okay, no, 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 no. My feeling is he should be able to overpower a guy like this anyway. Rosales reaching like that. You got to make him pay when he's extended like that, John. Hey, 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 no, 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 no. Let's keep him up. Hey, likewise. Hey, keep him up. The punch is Malik Walid issuing the warning to both fighters to knock off the dirty stuff. Ed Griffin having some pr problems with his, his trucks there, John. They're riding a little low. If they get much lower, this is going to be triple X. Big overhand right missed by Rosales. Griffin not using a consistent jab and certainly not doubling up with it hard, stepping into it. Big left hand by Griffin. I, I, Clips you know, Rosales as he backs away. Trying to figure out what Griffin's game plan is here. I'm not sure he knows. Fighting a very scattered, sporadic fight. Now he's letting a little guy back him to the ropes. That's what he should be doing more of, and then stepping to the side. Nice body shot by Griffin. Okay. Stop punching, stop punching, stop punching. Very good. Come on. Let's go. And, and he hasn't done much of that early in this fight. Rosales needs to get inside that reach advantage of Griffin. That's his only shot, John, to get a little closer, take away the leverage of Griffin, and work him up inside. This is one of those fights where neither fighter has been able to get into any kind of a rhythm because of the style of the other. We're to come to the ballroom. We'll be back. 
All right, we're back. Ballroom Boxing, Larry Michael with John Saracino here at Michael's 8th Avenue. And John, after two rounds, how do you have it scored? I got a 2018 Griffin. John Scheinman, after two rounds, I know this fight is absolutely thrilling you to no end. How do you have it scored? Oh, good morning. Um, I have a 2018 as well, but I don't feel real good about this 2018. It's a real close 2018. And, you, and you know, like John said, you would think that Ed Griffin would be able to take a kid like this apart. But don't forget, he's lost five of his last six bouts. And he's probably, you know, a little hesitant and not really sure of his skills anymore at this point. And he's going to probably have to hurt him for him to... Hurt Rosales to really get, get in his game plan. Uh, John Scheinman might be right there, John Saracino. The recent head, record of Ed Griffin might be working into this battle subconsciously. I think he's definitely right. I think it's working consciously. I, I think Griffin's showing he doesn't have that confidence that maybe he once did. Good point. Ed Griffin with a record of 16 and 7 with five knockouts. Luis Rosales in the red and blue trucks is 3 and 6. With one draw and two knockouts. Sometimes a fighter can get shell shocked. Let him go, let him go, let him go. Work out of here. Work out of here. Let him go. See a Griffin reaching out, holding the ropes. That is uh, forbidden in boxing, but it's also a sign of someone who might be tiring. And I, I can't imagine he's tiring already. Rosales just isn't quick enough to really make Griffin pay, very often anyway. Rosales has not been in against the caliber competition that Ed Griffin has gone against. Rosales has had a rocky road himself. He's lost three of his last four, and the fourth fight there was a technical draw against Matthew Hill back in December of last year. He's gone back to the southpaw style stance, has Rosales. You know what, I would stick with that for a while because it's working a little bit. You know, give Griffin something else to think about. Rosales really is a short plotter. Good body shot by Griffin. Really doesn't follow with anything though, and Rosales ties him up. Doesn't look like Griffin has the strength in the legs right now. Maybe the training, maybe the confidence is waning. Griffin up against the ropes. No, 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 no. Rosales had the power and skills. He'd be making a pay, huh, John? Yeah. He's not doing enough of that. Right there, he should be jumping on him. He's got a smaller guy in front of him. Shorter. Big overhand right by Rosales. End of the round. We're in the ballroom. When we return, John Saracino and I will stop dancing. We'll be back with more ballroom boxing after this. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. The trainer of Mike Tyson, Tommy Brooks, in attendance here tonight, checking out the scenery here in the ballroom, checking out the boxing. And John Tommy Brooks, uh, one of the better trainers out there right now in the professional ranks. Very good at what he does. And I tell you what, trying to keep up with Mr. Tyson. I don't know if that's a job I would want to have. But Tommy is a no-nonsense guy. I don't know if you know him very well, but I tell you what, he doesn't take any guff. He tells it like it is. He's tried to instill confidence back into Mike Tyson. Telling him he doesn't always have to think about knockout. You've got to rebuild the fundamentals. So it's been a process since Tyson has come back. For all the latest news on ballroom boxing, log on www.ballroomboxing.com. You'll get the schedules, you'll get the fighters, you'll get the ring card girls, and you even get pictures of us. No comment. I know, John, you log on every day just to check how you look. No, 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 no. <laughs> look here. That's the last one on the Look. No on the That's it. Let's go. I like that. Malik Waleed taking charge, telling Griffin he can't pull from behind the neck and then trying to punch. I tell you what, got Rosales' attention. Rosales really coming on here, Larry. Rosales has Griffin up against the ropes, and maybe the warning from the referee. Again, subconsciously, Griffin, loser of five of his last six fights. Oh, he's gone into a shell now. Look at this. Since Malik Walid warned Griffin, he's really gone into a shell. Rosales has not won a fight since September of last year when he knocked out Derek Abel in two rounds here in the state of Maryland. Nice right hand by Rosales. The problem was it had absolutely no effect on the chin of Griffin. None whatsoever. 
And that's just the effect of a smaller man punching up to a bigger man. See, this is a case of really neither guy can hurt the other. This is a distance fight because Rosales is not going to get stopped here. He's going to keep moving forward and firing. And I don't see Griffin possessing the kind of punch that's going to take him out with one shot. Well, out of 16 wins for Griffin, only five are by knockout. Good shot there by Rosales. Tell you what, that caught the attention of Griffin. This is Rosales' round. That would be a first on my card in the fourth. Come on. Come on, let's go. Watch your head. Flash Watch of your heads head. there. Let's go. Unintentional. Let's go. Malik Waleed calls it unintentional, and the action continues. As we said, this is a much better round for the challenger from Nicaragua, Luis Alberto Rosales. Big left-right combination by Griffin. Griffin threw a nifty short left hook on the inside. There was a low blow by Rosales. He got away with it. Has Griffin up against the ropes. Good round for Luis Alberto Rosales. We'll be back with more ballroom boxing after a timeout. Action from the previous round here in the ballroom. There's a straight right hand by Luis Rosales that got the attention of Ed Griffin. Got my attention. I gave him the round 10-9, but I have him trailing 39-37 after four. Let's and here quickly, comes Griffin. Let's quickly go to John Scheim and see how he has it scored, John. All even 38-38. I think this fight's going to be a battle of wills. Whoever wants it most is going to win the fight. This fight is scheduled for six rounds. Okay. We have four rounds in the books. Griffin practically ran Rosales out of the ring there, pushing him across the ring. And let's see if Griffin can get back in this fight after really getting hammered a little bit. In that fourth round, he needs to come back strong here and impress the judges. Rosales fighting with renewed confidence here in this fight after that last round. No question, he knows he's back into the fight, or he feels he can be, and he realizes there's a certain hesitancy by Ed Griffin, and he's trying to take advantage of it as best he can. There he goes, the unorthodox style, but you know what? Rosales is starting to get tired, Larry. His legs are starting to go. You can see him wobbling around. He's not quite the same fighter he was in the first couple of rounds, but he's still winging. Well, you saw the way he fell up against the ropes. That was not the move of a man who had his legs. Yeah, he's starting to trip over his own feet here. I tell you what, if Griffin could just stand there and feign him and then throw a right hand, he might be able to really drill him. Big left hand by Griffin. A lot of blood over the left eye now of Rosales. He's been busted open, and he just notices himself. Oh, yeah, right along the left eyebrow. Left hand of the forehead of Griffin by Rosales. Good body shot by Rosales. Yep. That cut is opening up a little bit now. And Rosales fighting with a little bit more urgency, realizing he's behind in this fight, probably. Watch him, watch him, watch him. Oh, here comes the blood. Watch your hands, watch your hands. Come on, let's go. We're about to take a bloodbath, Larry. Good body shot by Griffin as Rosales trying to impose his will on Ed Griffin up against the ropes. Well, they're clashing heads, too, on the inside. Griffin doing some great work inside, snapping the head of Rosales. And he was really turning over those shots like he hasn't done the whole fight. Griffin suddenly coming to life here in the fifth round. That was his best flurry of the evening. Oh, two body punches by Rosales, then going upstairs. Griffin not liking that, moving off the ropes quickly. The eye of Rosales, the left eye, a bloody pump. Well, you know, that body shot really dropped Griffin down along the ropes there. He doesn't like those body punches, and Rosales knows it. End of the round, we'll be back with more ballroom boxing. The sixth and final round is next. Sixth and final round here in the ballroom. Larry Michael with John Saracino and John Scheinman. Your scorecard, John Scheinman. 48-47, Luis Rosales. I just thought he launched a withering body assault in that last round. This fight's still up for grabs, but I just think he's turned the tide late. John Saracino, what do you think? Well, I think Rosales has come on in this fight and won a couple of rounds. I've got him trailing by one, 48-47. Well, a big headbutt there by Rosales came in with his head right on the nose of Ed Griffin. Well, he's been doing that. 
This has really turned into a very dirty fight. Rosales bending forward, using his head. Would you be surprised with the draw in this fight, John no, Sarazino? No. It's been that kind of a fight. Because really, if Rosales can have an impressive sixth round, you could make the case that the fight is even. And according to John Scheinman, he would make the case that Rosales won the fight. You know what? I might not disagree with him if Rosales wins a round big here. Griffin trying to counter Rosales on the way in, but Rosales just with those bull-like rushes. Nice left hand by Griffin, catches Rosales. And that's illegal by Griffin there. Not allowed to throw your opponent into the ropes unless you're in the World Wrestling Federation. Nice good. left hand there by Griffin, short little left. Yeah, it was a good body punch, though, started it by Rosales. And Rosales has continued to work that midsection, and you know what, that has slowed up Griffin a little bit. Good left hook by Rosales. A little bit of a clown job. Now he's pummeling him with left hooks as Griffin wraps his right hand up. Rosales showboating, fighting loose and easy right now. Well, Rosales figures, hey, what do I got to lose? Stop watching, stop watching. Besides another go. fight. He's three, six, and one. Now living in Silver Spring, Maryland. Ed Griffin from Baltimore. Rosales trying to use that jab for the first time in this fight. Where's that jab been? Hey, hey, hey. Well, he hasn't. Come on, let's go, let's go. Griffin hasn't used it enough to keep him off either. I tell you what, Griffin could be giving away this fight here. Rosales needs a strong finish here. And he's left hand by Rosales. And he's getting it. And they stopped that cut. Good job in his corner on Rosales' cut along the left eyebrow. And he just keeps moving forward. There he goes left-handed again. His feet aren't moving in conjunction with his upper body, though. The firing shots there by Ed Griffin, but really not effective. And he doesn't do it enough. Looks like the judges will decide this one. As Rosales stumbles back at the end of this final round. Nice right hand by Griffin. Ooh, good finish there. Very good finish by Ed Griffin. We'll be back with the official decision. Did Ed Griffin pull it off with a fine final round? We're going to find out. Don't go away. Well, the hallmark of ballroom boxing is competitive matchups, and the matchup with Griffin and Rosales, the epitome of a ballroom boxing competitive matchup. Very close fight. I had it scored a draw. Let's see how the judges have it scored. Let's go to Pat O'Malley. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. We have a unanimous decision, and it is very close. Judge Chevalier scores it 58-56. Judge Gradowski scores it 58-56. And Judge Holmes scores it 59-55. The winner, by unanimous decision, Luis Alberto Didamita, Little Dynamite Rosales. So an upset of sorts as Luis Rosales pulls it off, a unanimous decision win over Ed Griffin. And John Saracini has said it was close. Is the Rosales victory a surprise to you? No, I mean, let's face it. Uh, Griffin had some good moments early on in the fight. There's Griffin on the right-hand side. Rosales pressed the attack throughout the night. And in those last three to four rounds, was really able to make up ground, Larry. And with those two cards being 58-56, if you give Griffin one of those rounds, two of those judges have it a draw, as I had it scored. Luis Rosales, obviously very happy he gets the win over Ed Griffin. More ballroom boxing coming up in just a moment. Ballroom boxing brought to you tonight by Toyota, by Budweiser, by Geico Direct and by 104.3 WOCT. We're back with Ballroom Boxing. Larry Michael and John Saracino. Our main event is in the ring, and so is our ring announcer, Pat O'Malley. Pat? Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. The Maryland State Athletic Commission, Chairman Carlin Milligan, Jr., and Ballroom Boxing, promoter Scott Wagner, and matchmaker Josh Hall, present this 10 round bout in the super middleweight division. The referee in charge is Bill Holmes. Judging the bout, Gary Campaneshi, Kenny Chevalier, and Malik Walid. Introducing the Warriors. 
out of the out of the blue corner wearing solid gold wearing weighing 169 pounds from Hyattsville Maryland with a record of 18 5 and 2 8 by knockout please welcome B Tavian Scotland Out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks, weighing 168 and three quarter pounds. From Houston, Texas, and originally from Landover, Maryland, with a record of 36 and six, 26 via the KO. The former World Boxing Union champion and currently ranked number two by the International Boxing Federation. <laughs> He's now out of Detroit, Michigan. Please welcome Thomas. Ice T Tay. Thomas Tate, world class fighter, has been in the ring against several world champions and has had world championship opportunities himself against B Scotland. Bill Holmes is the ref. Touch him up. John Saracino, let's take a look at the matchup. Thomas Tate, Ice T against B Batavian Scotland. Well, Larry, when you look at the numbers, they're really pretty much even. Slight reach advantage for Thomas Tate. The biggest number you see that you don't see is the huge experience advantage in big fights for Thomas Tate. This is B. Scotland's biggest fight in his career to date. B. Scotland, I would think, is having some butterflies right now, feeling some butterflies against the uh, world-class Thomas Tate, whose last fight was a world championship opportunity, the IBF World Championship which he lost in a rather controversial way. And Thomas Tate looking to bounce back from some controversy. And his opponent tonight, the South Palm B Scotland. John, we've seen Batavia in Scotland many times here in the ballroom. His father must have been a piano player, huh? <laughs> you mean Sherlock Holmes? That's what his dad's known by. He's a piano player in Alexandria, Virginia. And if you wonder about the name Batavia in Scotland, when he started boxing, they kind of named them Beethoven for the fight game. He's got a sister. What's her name there? Do you know what her name is? No, I do not, Mo Jeff. Mozetta is in Mozart. And a brother, Bach. And of course, you know who his promoter is. Wagner. <laughs> and he's hoping to play some sweet chin music on Thomas Tate tonight. All right, I can hear the groans nationwide, <laughs> so we'll stop right there and get back to the fisticuffs. He's kind of looking for that right uppercut. He's got a very polished boxer, Larry, and a pretty good chin. In the past, he's been kind of distracted in his career and maybe not handled the best and trying to uh, kind of launch a, a mini comeback, if you will. He had a string of victories until... Uh, at six straight before his uh, yeah. loss to Alan Watts. The six. only fighter to have ever knocked him out. That came in 95. Back in 99, November, he lost to Alan Watts again. Of course, Thomas Tate, boxing fans know him for a long time. Started out as a middleweight at 160 pounds, moving up to super middleweight. Has the, uh, has the uh, name Roy Jones on his record, though loser by a, a knockout in the second round. In the ring against Roy Jones certainly prepares him for future fights. Well, he, he won his first 22 fights, and then uh, fought for the IBF Intercontinental uh, I think it was a super middleweight title, 1991. Percy Harris won a 12-round decision. Came back the following year down at middleweight, fought Julian Jackson, former champion, and lost again via a 12-round decision. Two years later, Roy Jones stopped him in two rounds. So Thomas Tate, although he's had a very good career, down right goes hand by Thomas Tate right on the button. B. Scotland nods his head, yes, good shot. I see Tate has been able to take care of fighters like Scotland in his career, but every time he's been had to step up, he's never been able to do it successfully. Not quick, in a big way. Quick flash knockdown. I don't think B. Scotland has any lasting hurt from that punch. One thing about B. Scotland is he's got a very sturdy physique, and he can take a pretty good shot. Well, he's going to need a good chin tonight against Tate. Nice jab by B. Scotland. Sends Tate stumbling back. Pretty good start to this fight. B. Scotland and Thomas Tate will be back.
Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Coast to coast, Larry Michael and John Saracino. There was the knockdown, the straight right hand by Thomas Tate put B. Scotland down. Kind of a flash knockdown. B. Scotland had a moment of his own after that knockdown, and a good strong jab pushed Thomas Tate stumbling back. I don't think B was hurt at all from that shot, but nevertheless, it's a 10-8 round for Tate. And B. Scotland did look very nervous, Larry, tonight entering the ring. He knows what this fight means. A, a win over Thomas Tate would really do something for his career at this point. Now, Thomas Tate, as we said, been around a long time. Turned pro in 1989. B. Scotland showing some good head movement. Keep out of range. Thomas Tate working that jab, trying to set up that right hand. And sometimes when you get a guy down early, you spend the rest of that fight looking to duplicate that punch. Scotland trying to work behind that jab. You see Tate jabbing a southpaw just enough. Let's see if he use, tries to use that lead right hand. Tried at that time, just came up a little short. Right to the chest of B. Scotland. Thomas Tate, a very savvy fighter. Nice left hand by B. Scotland. Scoring nicely. Another left hand. Thomas Tate rattled by those punches. Thomas Tate, though, is going to be 35 in December. So he's Starting to get some ring mileage on him. Reflexes not quite what they were a dozen years ago. Well, this would be a huge win for B. Scotland early in this fight, though. Thomas Tank has scored the only knockdown of the fight. Thomas Tate working that jab. Now, you got to figure B. Scotland's been in the ballroom many times. Knows the atmosphere. Thomas Tate coming out of a world championship situation into the ballroom. So that's a culture shock for Thomas Tate. Well, you know what, Larry? I don't think in this kind of case with Thomas Tate's experience, particularly in world title fights, uh, it's going to bother him. And for Thomas Tate, this is another going into another guy's backyard and uh, trying to come out with a win. Joining us now at ringside, a, a man I consider a friend, and it's really an honor to welcome him back to ringside, Lou Duva, the renowned trainer and my former broadcast partner, Lou. We saw you across the ring. You enjoying the action tonight at Michael's? Oh, I love it. I love being here. This is, this is my kind of action. Lou, let's get to right the action in the fight. Well, clock is winding down on round two. Lou Duva is with us. Larry Michael and John Saracino will be back with more ballroom boxing. Thomas Tate and Batavian Scotland are our main event. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Larry Michael, John Saracino. Of course, this gentleman next to us is Lou Duva, joining us here at ringside, taking on all comers. Lou Duva, as always, bigger and better than ever. Lou, looking at this fight right now, Thomas Tate has been in some world championships, maybe seen some better days. It's a great opportunity for the youngster, Batavian Scotland. If he pulls the upset, all of a sudden, he's somebody. Oh, absolutely. He's got nothing to lose. I mean, hey, if he can be the guy like Tate, he's right, he's right into the picture, you know? Uh, I don't think it's going to be Tate. I think it's going to be a good fight. I think it's going to go right down to the end. But uh, he's going to be out there trying, you know. This is a fight where he's got to try and win. He's got to try and win this here. I mean, Tate has got to get himself in the... I'm being strangled here. Lou's, Lou's having a problem with his <laughs> microphone, but it's okay. okay. Lou, Lou Duva has spent many, many evenings at ringside with me, and if we had time, well, we could tell him some more stories, couldn't good we? Good stories, right. Lou worked the corner between uh, between broadcasts. That's right. And, and you remember that <laughs> with Courage? <laughs> courage Savalava. <laughs> right. Anyway, action in the ring. Thomas Tate, John Saracino, you're watching this fight right here. It's shaping up like a pretty good matchup. Yeah, you'll see Tom come on, uh, uh, you know, in another round or two. He'll start opening up on this, on this kid here. This kid's a good, strong kid. I mean, you know, this is a test for him. You know, he's going to win this here fight, and he's going he's to try like hell to uh, uh, try and then get uh, Tate into a fight. Hey, Lou, is there any way to avoid when you got an orthodox guy against a, uh, an orthodox, unorthodox fighter, righty versus lefty, you can have your guy not step on the other guy's foot, or is it something you want to do? I might. I'm going to go out there and step on his foot. <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> let, the le re let the referee take care of it. <laughs> Atmosphere here in Michael's 8th Avenue, something special as always. B. Scotland, 
surviving that flash knockdown in the first round. He caught him with a, a good punch right on the button, Lou, but I don't think he really hurt B. Scott. No, I think he was off balance a little bit, but uh, it was a punch. You know, maybe if he had a little more time there, he may have knocked him down and after a couple more uh, encounters out there. But uh, right now, it's got he's got to develop into a fight. Right now, they're looking to feel each other out. Thomas State has so much experience against several world champions. Roy Jones among the list. Right, Adi, he fought last one. He was winning the fight, and then he had cut, and they went to they against went to the scorecards, right? Mm -hmm. In Germany, tough to win on the on the home turf of That's the champion. Right. Absolutely right. Lou Thomas Tate's never really been to, been able to get over the top and beat the best fighters when he fought them. What, what's been a difference in his career? Do you think? Um, I think trying to instill uh, confidence into him, John, and uh, that's what they haven't been able to do. You know, you know, yeah. He had a he had a brother, Frank Tate, good fighter who upstaged him more or less. You know, and he was always in the shadows. You know, right. I've never had that real confidence and the real uh, go out there and fight and declare war. You know, but. Now Frank is, is retired more or less, and uh, Tom is out there. Now Tom has got to come into his own. Nice right hand to end the round for B. Scott, and Leduva is with us here at ringside. We'll be back. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Larry Michael, John Saracino, and Lou Duva. And as always, John Scheinman along as well. John, how do you have this fight scored? Well, I think Thomas Tate is cruising along here through the first three rounds. I got him up 30-26. He gets the bonus point for the flash knockdown in the first round. You know, Thomas Tate is probably, as Lou Duva said, just slowly getting unwound here and maybe going to come on later on. But I think that meant, means that B. Scotland really needed to show him something early and maybe jump on him and see what kind of condition Tate was in. This isn't a big killer bout for Tate, and I would have tested him early, and I think he may have squandered that opportunity. A little bit of a mouse forming under the right eye of Batavi in Scotland. Well, you'll see Tate now. Now, Tate's going to open up with combinations and all. He's starting to get closer to him, you know? You can uh, see he's loosened up yeah, now. Yeah. When he starts jabbing him and, back, and backing him up, then you'll see the combinations come through. Luke, talk about the contrast. Thomas Tate coming off a world championship fight. Right. Comes into the club circuit here in the ballroom uh, a big big difference in atmosphere for thomas tate absolutely i mean but he knows one thing he's no dummy he knows he must win fights like this here he knows this has got to give him the experience to get back into the picture again you know he just can't afford to look bad right not even lose mm, look bad he can't even do that right. you know he's got mean, to look good mean win and look bad that's right like a loss absolutely for him right stage. absolutely right b scotland misses with a left hand Lou, what you doing these days? You got any fighters you're training? Anybody you want to talk about? Nah. I'm, I'm, I'm right now, not right now, I'm just looking at round sign girls. <laughs> <laughs> but at my age, it doesn't mean anything. I'll tell you what, Lou, the fans love you anywhere you go. And I've been there, I've seen it. It's just, uh, it's incredible the kind of reception you get. Well, I like fight people. I mean, uh, this is my life and uh, I like when they, when, uh, alongside the good good fights, you know, and you got crowds here hollering. It's a night out for them. It's an event for them. You it know? is, and that's what's great about a crowd like this here. It's no casino you know, where right. this high rollers hanging around. This is this is a fight crowd. It's grassroots. I love I love these people. And you know, Lou, uh, earlier tonight here in the ring, you announced the signing uh, by Duva Boxing right. of Jermaine Fields, a, a very fine unbeaten talent. Uh, this kid's got a lot of upside. I think he, I think he's got more upside than he's even shown. And I think right now, I think with the confidence he's going to have with the new team around him, uh, my son Dino, my daughter Donna, uh, I got Tommy Brooks into the picture, and uh, you're going to you're going to see you're going to see good, you're going to see him move up. And uh, I think he, I again I, I repeat it like I said in the ring. I think Manfredi, guys like Manfredi, Mayweather can lock those guys out. Believe me, he's got the style, he's got the punching power. And he's a southpaw, and he's very skilled. Right. Scotland misses wildly with a left hand. Round coming to a close. Lou Duva is with us here at ringside. Stick around. Welcome back to the ballroom. Larry Michael with John Saracino seen coast to coast. And we want to welcome those viewers in the New Jersey area. Checking things out. I think we're on in Florida too, aren't we? We're on in Florida. We're coast to coast on DirecTV, Prime Star, Echo Star. You name it, people on CN8 in New Jersey. Lou, you can even watch us back home. Oh, boy, I, and I'd love this here. I'd love to see it. Lou Duva's with us ringside. Batavian Scotland in the gold sequin trunks going up against 
the world rated Thomas Tate here in the ballroom. These fights like this here is, is what's going to establish these kids, kids up there. But you know, it's, it's a standstill up there right now. Everything is done with the promoters and all that stuff. Kids, new kids got to come up. New faces got to come up. And look, there's a, there's. The guy that plays the violin, Beethoven, is that who it is? That's him. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he's looking to play some chin music, Lou. He's going to play chin. When he can sit on the chin. Uh, he's, had a, he's had a couple of good straight left hands this round, though. Well, that's what's going to make uh, Thomas, I think, look a little better. When he comes to fight, the other guy walks in to fight, then you're going to have a fight on your Another hands. Another left hand by yeah, B. Right. Scotland and a right hand. Right. Starting to open up on the other side. Wait till Tommy's See, the mouth of Thomas Tate is open. This is the fifth round. This fight is scheduled for 10 here in the ballroom. Lou, against a southpaw, you've got to be more aggressive, don't you? Absolutely. you gotta, you got you to get close to him. You can't, you can't punch. You can't wait. No, you can't wait from the outside. You're, you're losing the timing. You're losing. Thomas Tate beginning to pick up the jab a little bit, looking to maybe set that right hand up. There's a scoring right hand. Thomas Tate opening up a base Scotland. As I say, as Scotland starts moving in and getting closer, and then you'll see a fight. Well, how much do you need to jab a southpaw? A lot of people. A lot. Think, okay, yeah, a lot of people think you don't. You that's just put right. Your left hand in your that's, pocket and you, and you throw the right. That's, but a, you do that's need the wrong to jab. philosophy. That's yeah. right. You got to jab and you got to back them up. You got to keep more balance. You got to keep putting pressure on them. And then you throw the right hand. Right, and then you, your combinations up, and you can hit it. You can throw right hand and then come back right back with a left hook. Scotland has some good movement, so this is a tough taste for a tough test for Thomas Tate. It's tough, tough to say, tough, tough test for right. Thomas Tate too. I'll tell you that. Oh, door, 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 door. A little swelling around Scotland's eye. Nice tight little right hand in close. Sprays perspiration off the head of B. Scotland. Scotland just doesn't throw enough combination punches to my liking. Although there he threw a three punch. Um, you like. And he did it again. Yeah, of course he wants to make me a liar. You know, Lou, is it possible that Scotland's level can be raised against fighting uh, against a guy like Tate? Yes, yeah, you got you to get that confidence factor over there. You know what I mean? It's a lot with all these young guys on the way up. We're back with more ballroom boxing from Glen Burnie, Maryland. Don't go away. Tommy Brooks in the corner of Thomas Tate. Check out Ballroom Boxing on the web, www.ballroomboxing.com. You know, I was on that website the other day, and there's a picture of Lou Duva on that website from one of his many appearances here at Michaels. Is that right? Yeah, you're looking good. Ah, uh, boy. B. Scotland in the gold sequin trunks and Thomas Tate in the black trunks. Let's check with John Scheinman in his scorecard. John? Well, I thought B. Scotland got on the board there in that last round. Some nice crisp combinations. I have him losing after five. 49-45 for Thomas Tate. But I'll tell you something. Thomas Tate looks a little rusty. Just doesn't seem like he's able to get going. And uh, we've seen B. Scotland a, lot, Scotland a lot. And I bet he's starting to think to himself, man, I've been in a lot tougher fights than this. Yeah. I think that, I, I think you're right, John. I think that Tom is waiting just a little too long. He's got to get closer to him. He's on the outside too much. Much. And he can do that by backing him up with his jab and getting his combination off. Nice right hand right on yep. the button Ooh. by Thomas Tate. That was right down the yep. pipe. I think that caught B. Scotland's attention. Yep. That's it. He's got to get up. There he is. He heard him that time. Another big right hand. Yeah. Scotland now. Having a hard time moving away, you see the foot movement after those two punches is disappearing from B. Scotland. He's got to get that. Once he gets that leverage, he gets starts getting closer to Scotland. Then you're going to see a different fight. I saw blood coming from Scotland's yeah. nose. I thought could have been from that right hand jab. Yeah. Couple big power shots from Thomas Tate. And just a Small trickle of blood from the nose of B. Scotland. Now it's opening up a little bit. It's coming out pretty good. Is that right hand? He might have broke his nose. Well, Thomas is capable. Of He's a pretty good puncher. Well, B. Scotland's going to have to dig deep tonight, Larry. Yeah. It's getting amazing. He's hurt now. There's some power shots from Thomas Tate. B. Scotland not responding. Yeah. Thomas Tate had a. Low fifth round, but I tell you what, yeah. he's really come on here in the sixth, Lou. 
Well, I saw Tommy, uh, I saw my son in law, Tommy Brooks, out there hollering at him to get in there and get close and start punching, throw more punches, and he's doing that. What can Scotland do to counter this action, Luduma? He's got to fight back. He's got to show his talent. Now is the time where he's, he's going to find out whether he's going to be a fighter or not. He's catching a lot of leather right now from Thomas Tate. The right hand right down the middle has done a lot of damage. He can do that again just by backing him up. See, backing him up and taking combinations off. You know, it's like you said before, John Saracino, you know, a lot of people don't I think you can't jab a southpaw. That's a fallacy. You can jab a southpaw and get your combinations off. Because once you do it, you're backing them up with that jab, you're in range. Then you can get your punches off. Scotland with an opportunity with Tate up against the rope, but Tate turns him around. It was a big round for Thomas Tate. Yeah. Big round for Thomas Tate. World ranked Thomas Tate. We'll be back with more ballroom boxing. Looking back on action from the previous round, boom, big boom. Right, right hand. hand. Good right hand. And that drew blood from the nose of Batavian Scotland. Well, it stopped them. It stopped them. Yeah. That's the most important thing. It, it, it again. Boy, you know what? Time's running out fast. This fight is really moving along. What, what Let's is it? check back in with John Scheinman. John, how do you have it scored? I have Tate. Tate's pulling away. I have him ahead 59 54 on my scorecard. All right. Thank you very much. Thomas Tate in the black trunks, Batavian Scotland in the gold sequin trunks tonight. Larry Michael, John Saracena ringside, joined by the one and only Lou Duva. You know, uh, fellas, this is a good fight for Tom Tate to put him back in the picture and get get back in, into boxing again. Right. You know, coming uh, off this, uh, I think, nine months since he uh, since he lost to Adi. And um, a fight like this, a hard fight like this, you know? Right. It's a legit guy in Absolutely, front of right. absolutely. It's, it, you know, they didn't put him in with anybody who's going to knock out one round. It's a real good comeback fight for him. Yep. Someone who is sturdy is going to you know, cause him to work a little bit. That's right. And at the same time, you're giving that kid an opportunity out there. Because even with a fight like this here, all he can do, all he can do is get better. That's right. Now, B. Scotland right now has, has not been punching back over the last couple of rounds. I think the power of Tate has taken a little bit of the fight out of B. Scotland. Well, this is where you got to dig down. You know, you got to dig down. Hey, you want to fight? You got to be a fighter. This is the moment that you got to do that. That's a left hand by B. Scotland as the blood continues to flow from the nose of Batavian, Scotland, out of Brentwood, Maryland. Thomas Tate trying to set up that right hand with the jab. Seeing with the scorecard situation right now, B. Scotland should be fighting with a lot more urgency. Yeah, he know he knows he's behind. If I was in this corner right now, I'd, I'd get him to step it up. That's the only way he's going to win. I mean, he's he's behind right now. He's behind pretty good, but for himself to get the combinations off, and he's got to go for knockout. There you go. Right hand by Thomas Tate. That rattled B. Scotland, and he has to take a knee. Yeah, that was a defensive move there to get out of harm's way. Now, again, you can do anything you want, but still, the experience is still got hit. That was a smart move by Scotland to take a knee, but let's see what Tate has to offer. He's really tattooing B. Scotland's face. Well, we've never seen B. Scotland hurt like this. Hey, Lou, Tate's going to be 35 in the fall. Looks pretty good for a guy at almost him, 35. He keeps himself in good shape, John. He's always in the gym. He's training good. Uh -huh. you know, and he, does, he, loves to go to, uh, he loves to go to health clubs and stuff like that. Bill Holmes, the referee, taking a long look at this action as Batavian Scotland getting hammered by Thomas Tate. Another big left hand by Thomas Tate. Scotland hold on. The end of the round, another big round for Thomas Tate here in the ballroom. Doctor is in the corner of B. Scotland. Let's look back on action from round seven. The right hand the doctor. was the first punch. B. Scotland hurt another right hand, and B. Scotland decides, I'm going to take a knee yeah. to avoid any more of those punches. Smart move, but again, at the same time, a desperate move by B. Scotland to avoid the onslaught of Thomas Tate. And it really put him behind in the fight, Larry, because that's the second 10-8 round for Tate. I've got him up ahead by seven points. 
Now, B. Scotland has eight knockouts out of his 18 wins. Yeah, he's not a puncher. I mean, he's not the kind of guy who's going to throw that home run shot and no. win the fight, especially against an experienced guy like Thomas Tate. Yeah, you see Thomas. Thomas fighting a good fight, smart fight. He's no dummy, this guy here. He knows what it's all about. And even though he's going 34, going on 35, he's still got the smarts out there, John. Yeah. Thomas Tate's pro career began back in February of 1989. He's 36 and 6 with 26 knockouts. But again, I, again, I know I knew him from his amateur days. He was always in the shadow of his brother Frank. He should have really been up there and, and really won a title, I think. I mean, mentally, you think he mentally, never really absolutely. overcame being a second banana. Absolutely. When, once he used to have press conferences or anything like that, it was, a, it was a big card. He was always in the shadow, in the shadow of his brother. And that's eventually what happened. And you finally had it. You know, you lose confidence after a while. Have you ever seen that happen with other brother combinations you could think of where a guy so dwarfed his brother that the brother never was able to really... Come on, I guess, you know, it wouldn't have happened with the Sphinxes because Leon did win the heavyweight title for a little while. I know, but still, you know what? When you when you talk about Sphinx, it was always Leon Sphinx. Yeah. It was never Michael Sphinx. Yeah, it was right. the other way around. That's anyway. right. <laughs> but an ability was the other way around. Right. Thomas Tate. No, no. Thomas Tate has had three world championship opportunities. One against Julian Jackson in 92. Right. He lost that by decision. Once against Roy Jones in 1995, he was knocked out in that one. And his last fight was a world championship opportunity in Germany against Sven Ucker, and he lost that one as well. Thomas Tate looking to get back in the win column here. It's not so much even a win column. He's got to get back himself where he's got the confidence and get back into the picture of boxing. Kind of a backhand punch from B. Scotland that time with a left hand. Scotland has had a couple of moments in this fight, but not many. I'm trying to figure out how Thomas Tate lost to Rocky Gannon in 1996. Yeah. <laughs> Can't figure that one on paper. Can't figure that either. Right now, Thomas Tate in no danger of losing this fight against Batavian Scotland, who really must have some kind of a dramatic rally here to turn the tide. Way behind. Well, the only way he can win it is with a knockout. He's got to go out there and try and knock him out. You know, now he's got to fight. Got to start letting that left hand go. The B is not a one-punch kind of guy. No. We're back in the brawl room. Larry Michael and John Saracino joined at ringside by the one and only Lou Duva. This is round nine. We're going to check in with our unofficial scorer, John Scheinman, for his scorecard. John. You know, I got Thomas Tate way ahead in this fight, 79-71. He's just, you know, he's probably working on some things, get it, getting himself back together after being off since last September. But I'll tell you something. If I'm in B. Scotland's corner, I say, hey, you don't want to grow old say, telling your grandkids, hey, I went tw 10 rounds with Thomas Tate. You got to go out and get him. I would do all I could to light a fire under this guy because his confidence is not high right now. And I think that's what would help him get into the fight. Nice left hand by B. Scotland right there as John concluded his comments. Would you agree to that those comments? Absolutely. Were? John said the right thing. Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, the only way he's going to win this fight is by a knockout. And then he's got to dig down and say, hey, let me go. Let me take my shots and get it over with. B. Scotland with the double right jab finds nothing but the gloves of Thomas Tate. The only way he's going to win this fight is one of those ceiling tiles falls and hits Thomas Tate on the head. Huh. <laughs> I think that would be a technical draw. Yes. <laughs> Tate just too skilled. Yeah, he's taken Batavian to school and really the more powerful of the two. He outboxed him and he outpunched him. I like everything I see about Tate tonight. I mean, he's really coming on, you know, after not fighting for nine months. I think he's, he's put up a good fight. Certainly a learning experience for young B. Scotland. Going up against the very experienced Thomas Tate. B. See, Scotland just 25 years old. See, they got him out there with his right foot. And, uh, uh, what he should be doing is moving in rather than anything. And he's not going to reach Tate from the outside. Yeah. But, and Scotland doesn't get out of his style very much. Nope. And that's the box from Absolutely. the outside. And that's his style. 
Absolutely. Big right hand by Tate snaps the head of B. Scotland. Yeah. He's really not a pressure fighter. No. And he better learn that there comes a time when you got to go in and out, in and out, especially when you're a southpaw, and especially when you're losing. He's more out than in. Yeah. He's not even going from side to side. He's going straight in when he does go in. Scotland using some movement from side to side to stay away from the power of Thomas Tate, but he is deeply behind right now. I think right now it's survival time, that's all. Yeah, it doesn't even look like he wants to, to really try. It looks like he's just trying to get out of this fight with a 10 rounder. He's been bleeding from the nose the past three rounds. Another good round for Thomas Tate. As B. Scotland holds on, back with the final three minutes of this bout after this. Tenth and final round of this bout between Batavian Scotland and Thomas Tate. Batavian Scotland looked like he's in such a hurry to get this fight over. Yeah. He charged off his stool to touch gloves like, you know, let's get this fight over with. Let's be friends. Maybe not. Maybe he's going to try to knock him out here. What do you uh, think, Lou? Well, if he tries that, he's probably going to hit him on the chin. He has no hope, though, if he wants but to he's win got this it, fight. That's the only way he can do it. But I want to know if he's going to try. Yeah. Well, he's going to try. Scotland has some pretty yeah. fast hands. Yep. See, I, I always thought B. Scotland could have benefited from a top, top-notch trainer. It's not like the guy doesn't have skill or speed. You know, I'm not sure he was handled the right way, and maybe he did some of the wrong things too on the way up. Well, you still got to have it. You still got to have. Got to have the right training and manage. <laughs> yeah, right, you got to and motivation too. Comes from the trainer a lot of times. Absolutely. Some guys need to be motivated, and some are already that way. But don't you think, Lou, the best fighters, they have it from within, from, from Jump Street, right? You Absolutely. can only motivate a guy a certain, especially when he wants to be motivated. Right. Big right hand by Thomas Tate. So what Lou talked about, he forces the action, he's liable to eat one on the chin. <laughs> See, but Thomas is smart. Thomas is keeping right in, he's keeping him right on the outside with that jab. Does Scotland and have an earring in his left ear? Or is that my imagination? No, I don't think they would link him. Must be the there. sweat glistening yeah. off the lobe there. See? See, Thomas is smart. He's hitting him with that jab and then boom, right back with the right hand. Good work by Thomas Tate in this fight, doing what he has to do to control the fight. Absolutely, that's what he's doing. I, I like the way he's doing. He's got an earring in his ear. He does have an earring in his ear. Which he is, does? Which is not permitted. Good body punching by yeah. Scotland. A little bit too late. A lot of it too late. Nice right hand by Tate. A little stud in that ear. A little more stud in Thomas Tate tonight, though, than B. Scotland. Nice straight right. Another one by Thomas Tate. I think you got to give B. Scotland some credit here for hanging in against the much more experienced world-class fighter Thomas Tate. Well, I don't think he wanted to be embarrassed in front of his hometown, even those two knockdowns. I think was... the best round he fought is this round here. Yeah, yeah I agree. But the Thomas is running right out there. I, I, hey, I can appreciate it. What Thomas is doing out there, you know, for being in the for nine months and then coming back like this. Yeah, he looked pretty good. Yeah, and he fought a kid, a young kid that's out there and looking to win. You know, I think it's a good fight. Good fight. Good fight. Thomas Tate and Batavian Scotland. And we'll be back with the decision after this. Welcome back to the ballroom. Larry Michael with Lou Duva and John Saraceno just witnessed a 10 round battle between Thomas Tate and Batavian Scotland. Thomas Tate really showing why he is a world-class fighter in his battle with B. Scotland. Well, really, it was Thomas Tate's power and experience, particularly after the third round. There was this first of this, I, don't, I think that may have been the second knockdown of B. Scotland. B. Scotland never really got into the fight, Lou, did he? No, I think after, after that was all over, uh, he just couldn't get close enough to him, John, to, to, to make it a fight. And if he wanted to make a fight, he should have got close to him. 
Hey, Lou, thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure seeing you. Are you kidding? You know what a pleasure it is for me to be with Abbott and Costello? <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate it, Lou. Love you. You know that? I love you, baby. Okay, let's go to Pat O'Malley with the official decision. Decision, please, ladies and gentlemen. We have a unanimous decision. Judge Chevalier scores it 98-90. Judge Waleed scores it 96-92. And Judge Campaneschi scores it 96-92. And the winner, by unanimous decision, ranked number two by the International Boxing Federation, Thomas Ice-T Tate. Thomas Tate victorious, a unanimous decision win over Batavia in Scotland. Thomas Tate runs his record to 37 and 6, 26 by knockout, and he is back on the comeback trail. Thomas Tate, workmanlike performance, John Saracino. Thomas Tate coming to us at ringside, and John Saracino. What was Thomas Tate telling you there as he leaned he, through the ropes? He told me he still had a lot left for an old man, Crafty. Actually, I told him he had a lot left. He said, <laughs> hey, I got a long way to go. I'm a Crafty kind of guy. And you know what? Based on what we saw tonight, even though B. Scotland is not an A-level fighter, Thomas Tate still has the reflexes and, and the ability to maybe get another title shot. Veteran victory for Thomas Tate. And he's standing by with John Scheinman. Thomas, nine months off since your last fight, the title challenge against Van Aki in Germany. Right. Lou Duva gave you a pretty good report card here for this fight. How do you grade your performance? Well, I grade myself for being a long layoff like that. It, it, it's not all my fight, don't get me wrong. Uh, I posted a fight in January, Sid Vanderpool, but I got sick. And that, that pushed this fight to that. And I got an upcoming May fight on the 26th in, in, in Connecticut. I grade myself for B. I, I think I did, I, I overall gave myself about an A minus at the most. What do, you th what do you think about coming out of a world championship fight and then coming back to the club atmosphere of ballroom boxing like this? Is it a little diff bit of a different situation for you? Yeah, it's a little different situation, but you know, you try your best to can keep, keep composed because I'm under the tutelage of Lou Duva now, and uh, I'm looking for a higher heights now. So, excuse me, I got, you know, it's not almost a start over process, but that's okay, I can deal with it because you know, you want to get knocked off the rust, and I don't want to wait no longer to come back. So I just thank God and thank Merlin, the people of Merlin, to coming out support me, and hopefully that I'll be back again. I'm sure that they want me back. Well, we will. Thomas Tate, very excited about 2000, looking for another world title shot. Let's go back to ringside, Larry and John. So what do you think, John Saracino? Did he give us our money's worth? I like the fact that Thomas Tate is still excited about boxing. He's not jaded. A lot of guys at that age who've never really won a world uh, championship become very cynical. Thomas Tate, you see a guy who still has a lot of love for the game yep. and has a lot left to prove. Good performance by Thomas Tate and John Scheinman as well. We'll be back with more ballroom boxing after it. Well, another night in the books here in the ballroom. The fans go home satisfied as usual. Thomas Tate, a winner tonight. He is world ranked. He's back on the comeback trail. An impressive win over B. Scotland. Certainly was. Thomas Tate showed he still has enough left to contend for a title somewhere down the road at age 34. B. Scotland, Larry, he's got to really ask himself some serious questions at this point in his career. Great night of boxing here in the ballroom. We hope you've enjoyed it. For John Saracino and John Scheinman, I'm Larry Michael. We'll see you next time for Ballroom Boxing. Hi, folks. This is Larry Michael. For the last three years, I've been ringside on home team sports for the telecast of Ballroom Boxing for Michaels 8th Avenue in Glen Burnie, Maryland. And I don't care if you're a fan, a trainer, a boxer, or a sponsor. But if you've missed ballroom boxing, this is what you've missed. Good body oh. shot by James Johnson. I tell you what, Johnson, Larry, two left hands right to the breadbasket of Lang. That's a blood from the ear of Johnson. Lang with a nice uppercut and a pounding right hand. And he's got Johnson in a little bit of trouble again. Yeah, he's hurt. A lot of blood. He goes down to a knee. A lot of blood from the nose of James Johnson. Oh, boy. His nose is in bad shape. Smart move by Johnson, though, taking a voluntary knee to catch a blow there. Oh, Johnson is a mess. Blood all over his face. Jimmy Lang senses it. Johnson still is dangerous. Huh? His nose might be broken. You can see his swelling right on the bridge of the nose. He is a mess. 
Good body wow. shot by Johnson. A lot of blood from the nose of Johnson. Oh, this is a mess. He is a bloody mess right now. James Johnson out of Shreveport. Jimmy Lang busting him up here in the third wow, round. Wow, his nose pouring like a spigot of blood. The doctor here at ringside taking a look. Sometimes that looks worse than it is, of course. There's so much blood. I tell you what, he's still fighting back, Larry. I don't think you can stop this fight. Oh, he's got a lot of guts, that's for sure. James Johnson has Jimmy Lang in trouble in a corner. Look at Johnson rip away to the body. Look at him coming on. Jimmy Lang needs to move. Jimmy Lang's in trouble now. Oh, this is the fight of the night, Larry. Jimmy Lang needs to get out of that corner. He's got to try and hold if he can. What is Joe Dye Wingfield doing? He broke the fighters with Jimmy Johnson all over Lang. What is he doing is right. Wow. Lang is bloody from the eye. Big right hand by Johnson. Lang is in deep trouble. Both fighters are bloody mess right now here in the third round. Larry, this is the best round we've ever seen, I think, on the ballroom series. Big right Larry. hand by Jimmy Lang. Back and forth this round goes. What's keeping Johnson up? And he's battling back. What a round. What a round here in round three. Well, save this one for the archives. The right eye of Jimmy Lang has been busted open, and the nose of James Johnson has been busted. Unbelievable. The question is, who's winning the round? Just an incredible round of action. And a big right hand by Jimmy Lang, and another one. Oh, mercifully, this round has come to an end. Ballroom boxing is a knockout. For more information on ballroom boxing, visit our website, www.ballroomboxing.com, or give us a call, 410-766-7474.